Hello, Jared the Weird Worker here. In today's video, I want to talk about bind runes and the construction of bind runes. Now, bind runes are somewhat similar to sigil magic in constructing sigils. Now, Hearthwitch has a wonderful video or two about constructing sigils that I will include in a card so that you can check that out because I think it's well worth learning. Bind runes are a little bit different because whereas with sigils, you write out a message des describing your intent and then take the letters from that message and turn them into some sort of sigil. And you can do that with runes, by the way. In fact, I think Hearthwitch might even mention that. Um, with bind runes, it's slightly different because you're not spelling out a message. You're looking at the individual meanings of each rune and combining them into an overall intention that you can then program and direct towards whatever it is you want. Um, now, I will note that learning the individual meanings of the runes, especially because I particularly tend to work with the Elder Futh Arc, which has 24 runes in it, learning the meanings of all those runes is beyond the scope of this video. Um, I used to teach a class on this, and it was basically a six-hour course that was spread out over three weeks, and that is way too long of a video to do. I don't think any of you would listen that long, to be honest with you. I certainly wouldn't. But I will recommend some resources to learn about runes. Um, the first one I would recommend, and this is my go-to resource anymore, is the book Taking Up the Runes by Diana Paxson. Now this is a wonderful book. It is a pretty hefty tome and Diana Paxson goes through the Elder Futh arc and she talks about the rune poems that we get information about them from. She talks about anything we know about ancient interpretations and she talks about modern interpretations as well. And one of the things I like is, is that she does mention what other authors have said about various runes and how to interpret them and how to use them in magic. And that's really nice because she mentions some authors whose books I won't recommend because they are either white supremacists or are at least very friendly with white supremacists. And I'd rather not recommend and send money their way. But you can still get some of the good points that they make through Diana's book. So I highly recommend you check it out. If you're looking for something that's a little less um, meaty and a little less um, lengthy, then I would recommend Lisa Peschel's book, A Practical Guide to the Runes. That's a very wonderful book. It's also, I will mention very briefly, that it is basically a recap of Tony Willis's book, The Runic Workbook, which sadly has been out of print for decades. Um, if you happen to find Tony's book, I would highly recommend checking it out. Um, a couple of other, one other author I will mention is Nigel Pennock. He has a couple of rune books that, as far as I know, are out of print. When I checked Amazon, they only had used sellers for it. Um, but that is the good news, is, is his books were popular enough that you can probably find his books through um, used booksellers. Um, and like I said, you know, if, if you don't have a problem working with Amazon, um, I consider Amazon a necessary evil personally, um, you can order it used through um, the Amazon Marketplace. So that's always an option too. So, like I said, check out those resources for actually learning the meanings of the runes. Um, this video is going to focus on, okay, you've selected some runes, how can we construct them into a bind rune? And for this conversation, we are going to talk about creating a bind rune for harmony in the home. So for this purpose, I have chosen three runes that I think are great for harmony in the home. The first one is a Thala, which represents land or a sense of rootedness and an ancestral spirit. So I think this is a good one for harmony in the home because it gives the idea that, you know, home is where we're rooted. Next, I chose Gabo. Gabo means a gift. It also represents the exchange of gifts and the exchange of energies between people and the relationships that form through that. So it's very much a relationship rune. And then the final rune that I chose was Wunjo, which is perfection and has this idea of perfection um, and is often, you know, in the, you know, book of the rune writer who shall not be named, 
called joy. And I think that it's very good because this is the idea that, you know, there's this joyful perfection. And a lot of that, again, has to do with home and unity and, you know, relationship. You know, perfection is not just an individual state. It's something that we experience in community. So the simplest way to combine these rooms is just to overlap them, kind of like you should be seeing on your screen right now. And that's very simple, and that makes a bind room. And there's your symbol. Now you will notice that I have combined them in a way that makes each of the individual lines of every single rune perfectly visible. You don't have to do that. You can combine lines of the different runes. For example, you could position Wunjo so that the flag portion, you know, the little triangle at the top, fits in perfectly and blurs into the one side of the Othala room. And that's perfectly valid as well. That's all a matter of personal taste. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is when you actually, once you decide on your bind rune and you go to carve it into something or paint it on something or trace it, order can matter. At least to me, it matters. And order can be a thought about, okay, what runes are more important or what runes flow into the other? In the case of this particular bind rune, I personally like the idea of drawing the Othala first making things rooted, and that flows into Gabo, the exchange of energies and exchange of gifts and the relationship building, and finally ends in Wunjo, that perfection. Now, there are other ways to combine runes into a bind rune. You don't have to just overlap them like that. You can actually create them so that they are in, you know, different configurations and don't, you know, and you know, well, let me just give you an example here. Let's take those same three runes, and this time, let's do it like this. So we have, as you can see, the gabo is in the center, and is basically the central wheel from which the other two are drawn. And you can see that Wunjo there is in the upper right-hand corner, and demonstrates that, okay, it's just, you know, the, the vertical line of the Wunjo is just part of the X of the Gabo. So you have that. And then down at the bottom, you have the Othala, which I have actually, you know, turned somewhat upside down because the idea is, is that, you know, it, the energy flows from the Gabo, the center of the Gabo, where the two lines of Gabo meet, and flows down to form the Othala room. And I like this, especially if I'm doing more than two or three bind runes, which two or three runes in a bind rune, which for me is kind of rare, but like this gives me, okay, if I use Gabo as my central, as my center spoke, then I can, you know, add two more, you know, one, one on each of the other legs of the Gabo rune, and suddenly I have a five rune bind rune, which in some cases might be helpful. Maybe there are, you know, five different runes whose energies go into my intention and my work and clarify it. So, and in this case, again, talking about, you know, how to draw it, you know, I would probably start, obviously, with Gabo, since that is the central, and then, you know, draw the other runes onto the Gabo from there. So, this is basic rune and bind rune creation, and I hope that you found this video helpful. If you have your own experiences with making bind runes, I'd love to hear about them. Share them down in the comments below. Thank you for listening. Until next time, blessed be.